Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. President Joe Biden heading to town to stand with striking UAW workers. This could be the first time a sitting U.S. president ever joins a picket line. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Rhonda Walker. And I'm Priya Mann. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. This will be an impactful week with President Biden stopping in Metro Detroit today and his political rival, former President Donald Trump, visiting tomorrow. The strike against Detroit's big three automakers now in day 12. Our Rod Maloney joins us now live from Wayne at the picket line of Ford's Michigan assembly plan to tell us how these visits may impact the talks. Yeah, well, uh, good afternoon, and yes, we're out here, and it's a very busy Michigan Avenue out here at the Michigan Assembly Plant, the Old Wayne Assembly Plant. And uh, what we're seeing is that the president actually isn't in, in uh, Metro Detroit just yet. In fact, he's expected to land in about seven or eight, ten minutes, somewhere in there. And he's not coming here first. As we understand it, he's going to be going to Belleville, uh, which is pretty close out to the airport as well. And uh, the General Motors pl distribution plant, the... Uh, uh, parts distribution plant out there. That's the first stop. And then his second stop is expected to be out here at the, uh, the Michigan Assembly plant. And the visit won't especially be long because we're expecting him to be back in the air by about 3 p.m. So that appears to be the schedule, although uh, things have been sort of uh, fluid this morning in that regard. In the meantime, out here on the picket line, a lot of the, uh, the, the, the Ford picketers that we have spoken with said that they're uh, actually, okay, they're glad to see the president, but they know uh, that the president isn't going to get them a deal. And a lot of the people we talked to here today said that they really just want to get back to work. They want to get this contract and get back to work. And in fact, when they hear that Sean Fain is saying that they're getting close to a deal, that, that gives them optimism that that can happen. In the meantime, Sean Fain himself will be with the president this afternoon when he does come to visit. And uh, their, in, their uh, relationship has been interesting in that Fain has not endorsed the president for his reelection, but is going to be with the president this afternoon. So we'll have to see how all of that works and whether that changes uh, within the rest of the day. But one of the things that happened out here is we were talking to one of the uh, picketers out here, and he said that the president isn't a big thing for him. He just wants that new contract. And he also uh, told us this about why it is that he thinks they need to be out here on the picket line. I know that the union supports him and all that, but I don't. But I'm out here for my fellow workers. Uh, I think that the uh, second tier people working next to people that are full paid, I don't necessarily think that's fair. It's been like that for a while. We've been doing that since about 2008, I believe, when we all had a lot of problems. We had to give up a lot of con uh, uh, concessions to get that. But now's the time for them people to be brought up and be parity with everyone else. And so he is parroting a lot of what the companies have been saying because Ford last night said uh, that they say that, it, look, it's going to be Ford and the UAW that comes together uh, creatively to get an agreement that keeps them competitive and also gets the workers their fair share. And Stellantis said much the same in their press release, saying that they have an offer on the table that they believe does all of that, gets the workers what they have earned, but also keeps the companies competitive. So uh, an interesting atmosphere out here, to say the least. It'll be interesting interesting to see whether the president himself actually does take up a picket sign and uh, walk with some of these union workers out here at the Michigan Assembly plant. So for now, reporting live from Wayne, Rod Maloney, Local 4. And if he does that, certainly history will be made. All right, thank you, Rod. And as we mentioned, former President Donald Trump is coming to Michigan this week. As he previously announced, he won't be at tomorrow night's the second GOP debate. But who will be at the debate? North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum will be there, as well as former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former Vice President Mike Pence, along with former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, and entrepreneur entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy. It's tomorrow at 9 p.m. at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley, California. As the UAW talks continue, Ford Motor Company is putting construction on hold for a factory in Marshall. Ford said in a statement it's pausing the project until it's confident it can competitively operate the plant. The plant is supposed to start making batteries in 2026 for new and existing electric vehicles and create over 2,000 jobs. 
Turning our attention to Canada, the auto workers there say that General Motors will be their next target for contract negotiations. Unifor ratified a new three-year labor contract with Ford over the weekend. The union represents about 4,300 workers at three GM facilities in Canada. Talks with GM are set to begin today. And now that the UAW is targeting plants making vehicle parts, it could have a trickle down effect from big parts to small ones. They're all a bit harder to get a hold of. That's what Juan Menendez, a manager at Royal Collision in southwest Detroit, tells us he's worried this could eventually make the waiting game even longer on top of the lasting effects of the pandemic. Prior to COVID, we were getting the parts like, you know, one to two days. Now it's, you know, taking three to five business days. You know, I've had cars here sitting here for four months waiting on parts. If they're on back order, there's no ETA. They could be sitting here a month, two months, three months. And even though the 38 part centers are being targeted, the full impact of the strikes hasn't hit yet. Mendez says a lot of the dealerships that he works with try to keep a large stock of the most in demand parts. And stay with us right here on Local 4 and click on Detroit.com for continuing coverage of the UAW strike. We'll give updates on the president's visit as well at 4, 5, and 6 this evening. Meanwhile, lawmakers are working to avoid a government shutdown with the deadline quickly approaching. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is still hopeful there's enough time to strike a deal. NBC's Drew Petromo reports on how this could impact an already shaky economy. With the deadline fast approaching, lawmakers from both sides of the aisle are warning of the consequences of a government shutdown. But with no solution in sight, organizations both inside and outside the government are bracing for impact. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Madam Vice President. After meeting with the leaders of historically black colleges at the White House, President Biden warning about the impact of a government shutdown on minority communities. Shutdown is going to risk nutrition assistance to nearly 7 million moms and children. It's going to disproportionately affect black families. But the impact would spread across the U.S. economy. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack says farmers will lose access to important loan programs in the middle of harvest season. When we have a shutdown, uh, Farm Service Agency offices in virtually every county of this country shut down. And those loans are, are not available. Just a few miles from Capitol Hill, a food bank is preparing for a possible surge of 100,000 people needing food assistance if the government shuts down. We know that when budgets are stretched, food is the first thing to go. Like everybody else, just totally frustrated that they can't get it together. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Inside the halls of Congress, gridlock persists. A small group of hardline Republicans is blocking budget bills as they seek more cuts to government spending, holding a slim majority House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, desperately trying to find a deal before the government runs out of money Saturday night. Why would they want to stop paying the troops or stop paying the border agents or the Coast Guard? I don't understand how that makes you stronger. Adding to the headache for McCarthy, former President Trump taking the social media, urging the hardliners to continue holding out, writing, unless you get everything, shut it down. Today, Speaker McCarthy plans a series of what are essentially show votes on spending bills packed with conservative priorities. It's aimed at winning over Republican holdouts, but it's unclear if the move will lead to any progress in avoiding a government shutdown. Drew Petromo, NBC News, Washington. And if you look outside, it's been a pretty gloomy view out there. Yeah, we do not need the sunglasses today. (laughs) Ashley, although the temperatures, though, aren't too cold, it could be worse. Yeah, yeah, it really could. And we'll bring our own sunshine on a cloudy day. As we take a live look outside Mount Clemens, the clouds are winning out. It's been pretty dreary, and we've had a little bit of drizzle across the area. 69 degrees in Detroit right now, 67 in Howell, 64 in Port Huron, and 67 in Monroe with a wind about 7 to 10 miles per hour coming out of the east southeast. So as we look at clouds and radar, a lot of that moisture has been hanging tight just in the northeastern part of the thumb and then some moisture that's crossing Lake Michigan. So as we look at exact track 4D, any light showers that are coming down um, are just west of Watertown and southwest of Sandusky up into the thumb. Rest of us holding on to the cloud cover this afternoon with some spotty drizzle that could still kind of redevelop 69 degrees though for that afternoon high at Metro Airport will be close to that 70 degree mark into the city. But those temperatures 
temperatures will continue to slide downward as we head into the middle of the week. So tomorrow and Thursday, a couple degrees cooler than where we are today as we hold on to the cloud cover and rain chances, but we will be climbing out of that. So come Friday as we dry out, we welcome back seasonal low 70s, but then by the time we hit the weekend going into early next week, a nice warm up. How long those warm conditions last and when we'll finally dry out. We'll give you that hour by hour in just a few minutes.